Hello, I am the king of content. Welcome to the King's Court. We're sitting here today with Eric Ryan. Eric, thank you for joining us. Now, Eric, some of the people may not be as wise as the king and may not be as familiar with you and your work. Could you briefly explain to them who you are and what you have done? Sure, my name is Eric Ryan. I make soap. I make really nice soap that's uh, non-toxic, good for your home, good for the planet. Smells nice, looks nice, makes cleaning a little bit more fun. Excellent. As a medieval king, I bathe probably once a month. Is that good? For a man of your stature, sounds about right. Excellent, excellent. Now, you spoke about developing a uh, yes and culture. As a king, I work hard to develop a, uh, just a yes culture, because mm. I just want them to do what I say. But explain to me your yes and culture. Mm. I may uh, resubscribe to your culture. It sounds much easier. No one argues with you. No, nope. fear seems to work. Wow. Uh, we use a lot of carrots, but uh, I'll try the stick next time. So uh, we're big fans of improv. Excellent. And uh, improv is very much about the give and the get, right? Which is what collaboration and innovation and making ideas is better. So when we look at ideas, we always try to uh, use our brains to look at it and not say, yes, but here's why your idea sucks, but yes, and here's how we can make it better. Now, you also speak about finding monsters. Mm. As a king, this is important to me to find monsters, or at least to convince my subjects that I'm looking for monsters hmm. so that they are scared and do what I say. You uh, recently tackled a monster. Could you explain how you found it and what the monster was? Yes, I, lo I love your yes and of the monster. It's uh, a much better, better use of monsters. So our latest monster is the laundry cap. It's uh, way too big for the job, way too confusing to find uh, the actual line you're supposed to use, so you use too much. When you use too much, it's bad for our waterways, like your moat. Mm -hmm. It's uh, bad for your surfs. Um, because uh, it clogs up their machines, and it's bad for your skin, because like patch medicine, rubs up against your skin for 12 hours a day, so anything left behind is gonna find your way into your bloodstream. Not good, that's a monster. So we're slaying it with helping people use the right amount and giving them a really small, compacted uh, option. Excellent. I have to fight dragons, or I have men that do that, and that, uh, so they're similar, because dragons are also terrible for your skin. We're all kind of dragons inside, aren't we? I have a dragon inside, but that's a long story. It was made into a movie with Dennis Quaid. Yes, more of a lizard, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you also tackled seven Goliaths uh, with your company. Seven Obsessions. Goliath companies. Uh, oh, yes, they there are is, There is a legend in my uh, kingdom that I tackled uh, seven Goliaths, but that's just what we tell people so that they'll hold a celebration for me once a year. You actually did it. Uh, what were the seven Goliaths and how did you tackle them? I don't know if we slayed them. They just haven't stepped on us yet. We've been able to keep moving faster. So we, uh, when you're taking on many giants like that, one competitive advantage is not enough. So we have seven competitive advantages. We try to change the game as much as possible. So we're not actually fighting them on the, the same battlefield, you could say. And uh, so it's everything from how we think about setting up the organization around a, a culture of innovation to winning on design, to creating great product experiences, to inspiring advocates to help us build the brand, to being a green giant and doing things that are not only good for ourselves, but good for the planet that we all live on. And um, from those collectively, it's given us a, a point of view and a competitive advantage that uh, we have yet to be stepped on. So it's not unlike when I hold a jousting tournament and just change the rules every time that I look like I'm going to lose. Exactly. That is, that is smart. That is smart. That is how you ensure you win all the time. Don't play the same game with somebody bigger than you. Make them play a different game. Yeah, make them play a game against you and two other guys. I like it. Now you foster, uh, one of your marketing strategies is fostering deep relationships with uh, a small few and allowing it to grow. I don't tend to foster deep relationships as a king. I just, you know, keep people on the outskirts and, and scare them. You don't uh, need to, you're a king. I'm glad, I'm glad you understand, hmm. Eric. Some do not, and it <laughs> makes it difficult as a king. I would like to learn more about fostering deep relationships, uh, as it is becoming you know, less acceptable for me to simply pour hmm. boiling oil on those that do not listen. Uh, we're looking for a kinder approach. H how do you foster these deep relationships? Well, we, um, we have no choice, right? 
So we don't have a lot of friends. So the friends we have, we have to make really good, good friends out of that. So there's two places we try to foster great relationships. One is with uh, consumers. We never call consumers, they're advocates. We don't want people to consume our product. We want them to be an advocate for it, that they're so passionate and inspired. So it starts with being a transparent company so they know who we are, what we stand for, they can believe in us and, and what we do. Two, it's giving them product experiences that are worth talking about, worth sharing, that um, exceed expectations. And three, it is um, always inviting them to participate in the brand. So all marketing is, has some sort of ask. But the real secret of it is um, we give a product that people love because of the design, because of the fragrance, and then they discover that it's actually good for them, good for the planet. It's be kind of like if you found out Skittles were healthy for you. How'd you feel? Be very happy. You would. Excellent. So these consumer advocates, uh, they go out and tell people about your product. I have a similar thing, which is where if someone uh, disagrees with me, I chop off their hands and it mm. advocates to the rest of the people, don't disagree with me. But I imagine yours is a far friendlier approach that uh, uh, allows people to uh, uh, like you. Yes, so next time, instead of chopping off their hands, try giving them free manicures instead and see if that works. They may talk about it just as much as the, uh, the missing hand. Uh, now, how old is, is Method Soap? Uh, we just had our 11th birthday last week. 11 is a mighty age. Yes. Uh, at 11, how do you continue to foster these deep relationships with your loyal customers? Well, we fundamentally believe that the bigger we get, the smaller we have to act. One of the ways we do that is we, we keep things weird. But uh, you know what? We're very lucky that we live in an era of social and um, digital media where it's much easier to tell a story in a, uh, a, a deeper way that um, inspires people to share, to pass along, to engage than just a traditional monologue uh, media strategy. So instead of everybody else who's shouting in their advertising, we get to have a dialogue through social and digital media. We're launching a continuity social media program where most people, including ourselves, have treated social media as a, a one-off, right? So you shout, you dark, you shout, you go dark. And the idea of a continuity program is every month we're putting new content out there, so it's an ongoing dialogue versus a monologue. So we'll release a new film every month and put new content out there, and then continue to keep the conversation going that way. Excellent. Mr. Ryan, thank you very much for taking the time to sit with the king and his court. Thank you, king. Ladies and gentlemen, we were here with Eric Ryan at the Art of Marketing Conference.